This is the American Youth Symphony rehearsing at the Musicians Union Local 47 in Los Angeles. They are an inspired group of young, eager musicians from around the United States, playing a wide variety of pieces from the likes of Bach and Beethoven to modern composers. Today, they are working towards an upcoming concert at Disney Hall in Los Angeles, where they will perform pieces by Stravinsky and Solomon under American Youth Symphony music director Carlos Iscaray. They will also perform with virtuoso rock guitarist Steve Vai on some of his compositions. As unique and unprecedented as this concert is for the American Youth Symphony, it is but one in a long legacy of incredible and diverse concert presentations by this group. The American Youth Symphony receives part of its funding from the NEA, the National Endowment for the Arts. This orchestra is just presenting me with the opportunity to like become a performing musician and be with people that are at a much higher level than myself, which challenges me to work harder. Um, and I'll never forget the first concert we played Beethoven's Ninth Symphony with the Angels Chorale. Uh, that set the bar very high for the, um, the repertoire to come, and it's never um, failed to surprise me. Music is kind of the only thing I've done my entire life. So my mom's a jazz singer. Uh, my dad, he played French horn and bass, but right now he actually is a sound engineer for movies. So it's kind of like music has always been a huge part of my life. So even in high school when I was thinking about college, there was nothing else I thought about doing other than playing the bassoon or being in music. <laughs> National Endowment plants seeds of artistry and music across the country. Music and art enrich our lives immeasurably, but it's not always clear how small communities or working class people can have access to this type of experience. I just know for me personally, I could not have been born at a better time than when I was born because in my high school, we had an orchestra, we had a band, we had a jazz band, a horn band. I was taking music theory classes when I was 12 I started, okay? They were intense and I composed my first orchestra score when I was 16. And it's like every, every time I come here, I normally don't play contemporary music, so every piece I'm hit with is like a s splash of cold water to my face and it's this new experience and all these different styles and, of writing that are just crazy, like especially the piece we're doing now with Steve Vai, the way that he uses music and sounds, and he paints with like wild paintings. I don't even know what type of style I would consider that. that first exposure, a 16-year-old getting the chance to play viola with a world-renowned conductor and a world-famous guitarist to spark inspiration in these young people, to prepare them to become the leading creative voices of tomorrow. The American Youth Symphony and the music that we perform, the, the quality of experience of music playing for our fellows is very high-end, and it's something that, uh, since we've been around for 52 years, and in my position, I hear a lot from our alumni base, um, who almost uh, all of them are out succeeding in the world, and, and most of them in the field of classical music still. And they talk about this experience here and what it meant, this sort of incubation of performing at this level. If you put aside the, practic the practical aspects of it, that it's going to be harder for people like me to do what, what we do. Um, it's, it says something about our nation and the direction that we're going in. It says something about the value that we're giving to the things that we do that reflect our own humanity. The checks and balances that we have in our culture, arts are part of that. Arts are, are here to comment on culture. Arts are here to critique culture. And without that, we lose, we lose a vital part of what makes sure that we all like have our heads on straight and all are like acknowledging the humanity that's in one another. And the fact that we're devaluing that is, a, is, is scary to me. 
So the value provided by this program doesn't have any measurable effect on GDP or our trade deficit, but it just affects a lot of children who are just in their formative years. This is a time when um, their outlook on life and uh, what they want to do in life is being formed. So having this kind of diverse creative experience really uh, allows them to explore more options in life. So I really advise whoever is making um, the legislative decisions to fund or defund the National Endowment for the Arts to support the endowments. I think that the arts in general are vital to cultural evolution and to personal, mental, and spiritual evolution. Like in a time where people are so increasingly disconnected with each other, especially music is the one thing that allows us to feel something on a deeper level with someone despite our differences. And it just has so much to offer for everyone, like whether they're young kids or, you know, very old people that have never studied music. It just can open your mind to creativity. Remove the National Endowment for the Arts in your community, then it it's like a, a thread in a sweater that starts to unravel, that's directly linked to the mental health and well-being of your community. Support well, is easy to do, too. You, you support a young musician just by inspiring them to follow their, follow their muse, follow their enjoy, follow their note. That's big, that's one-on-one -on -one support. That's the, that's the biggest support, because if you can change the life if you, can, if you can help encourage one child that has a musical inclination, that's a lifetime of service to humanity. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's a beautiful thing. And that's a one-on-one. -on -one. It's just an empathetic. It's, a, it's an empathy. You know when you receive an NEA grant that it will inevitably trigger other people to back you. It's, you know, everybody wants to back a winner, and the National Endowment for the Arts' is vetting process for receiving a grant is so rigorous that should you receive it, it says to your community, to your major donors, your small membership base at the $25, $60 level, to your corporations and your community, it says to all of them, this is something worthwhile and supporting. So it doesn't really matter how much NEA gives you. It's the fact that it does support you that allows an arts administrator to go out and raise thousands upon hundreds of thousands of dollars more. Of thinking that, for, that it's peripheral in some way, when actually it's as integral as it gets to being alive on this planet. And if you don't understand that, then you are misunderstanding the core values of people that you support. I've heard a little bit about it, that they're cutting the funding. I think they're also cutting funding for like NPR and some other like classical radio stations as well, which is really disheartening. Because I mean, these programs are huge, especially for students like us and people in high school. They're huge to give us a real sense of what it's like to be a professional musician. I mean, if we didn't have these orchestras, we wouldn't have anything to put on our resumes to try and actually get a job. And um, we just wouldn't have the fundamentals of how to play as like a musician in a group. It, this is a huge opportunity for us to be able to do this.